What's up, what's up? It's your girl D. And it's your girl M. Slamming those DMs. Gang, gang. Welcome back to Too Many Damn Layers. This is episode 15. The letter today is G. G as in grief. G as in growth. And G as in gay because we are gay as fuck, bro. This is a gay podcast. If you're not gay, welcome. I don't know why you're here, but we, we, we welcome you. You know, and we just wanted to talk about our experiences growing up, especially because we're both. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I'll, I'll identify growing up as a gay Christian. And yeah, I mean, I feel like I was very much closeted, so oh, I, see. I, I was I, just Christian back then. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. Do, do you think you can pray the gay away? I'm do proof you? that it does not work. So Same, same. <laughs> and that's what I think we just want to talk about just because some of the stuff we've seen lately or such as i saw something about like a teach some christian schools are wanting to fire the teachers for being gay and all that and it's mm-hmm. just like damn doesn't that suck for real though but yeah. like I, and they claim religious freedom for it yeah, yeah. which I'm, I'm not even going down that rabbit hole with the whole religion thing because it's like the hypocrisy with like lots of religions mm-hmm. sometimes it's, it's just insane but we just want to talk about i guess how we grew up in dealing with being gay or christian but i do think we have like i said we have different experiences like i grew up like baptist yeah and i grew up everything but i was officially baptized lds okay and do, do you think you're you early on realizing that you're you're gay do, do you think that that conflicted with your religion oh absolutely i feel like i always kind of knew but i didn't really acknowledge it until after i was baptized and it was interesting. Yeah, a little baptism. <laughs> it was really trying to pray that gay away. Yep. Jesus Put you is in the water. save my sins, okay? Yeah, please take a, uh, yep, drown her in the but water. But I think the issue the was that, you know, I got baptized when I was 11, middle school. Prior to baptism, I didn't really care for men or, like, guys or girls. Like, I didn't have any interest romantically in anyone. Mm. And so it was probably, like, two or three years after I was baptized that it really started to, like bubble up to the surface it's like you always know but you don't really acknowledge (laughs) it until you go through hormones and things like that and also real quick just so you guys who who don't know who are new listeners what's up welcome um i'm here she is pansexual i am and i'm just a lesbian (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i was trying to like pretend i was eating pussy or something but like the mic got away that was not a good impression you Oh, that's even worse. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't, we'll, we'll find out tonight if it's good or not. You know. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, well, because you were Baptist, how is that? I feel like Baptists are way more in your face about their it's beliefs. It's like, okay, what, like I always want to say, you know, like my, my old church I used to go to when I moved here to El Paso. Like I like them. Of course, my best, my best friends. And I mean, their dad was our youth pastor and all that. So it's nothing like against them. It was more so just, I think just in general, I mean, there's a little hints, a little hints. So for me, I wasn't, I guess I was kind of, it wasn't that, that I wanted to be closeted. I was just trying to figure this out myself. Mm-hmm. Just off of the fact that I was just like, yo, I've been in church pretty much growing up my whole life. Pretty much I've been in church, but I got more in church, uh, 2009. <laughs> <laughs> I got persuaded to go to tr- uh, church Same. was to go on a trip. <laughs> That's when I was baptized. I was baptized 2010. It's like February 20th, 2010. I was baptized when I was four. No, I wasn't 14. I was 13 when I was 14. Mm. Um, But what happened though, it was that I got persuaded to go to church because my best friend said, the youth pastor, he was also the director of the YS. So we pretty much saw each other every damn day, (laughs) pretty much, right? And so he was like, you want to go on a free trip to Colorado? It's free. Only cost is going to church. Bribery. Bribery. I'll, I'll take a free trip. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Shit. And so I'll we, we right went on that bus. We went, to, we went to church. And then we went to church for the next couple of years. Went to church every Wednesday and every Sunday. I went to church. Same. And it was, except for like during like high school, like I was like in track season or something like that. I didn't go. But it was pretty much overall them, youth pastor, amazing. Mm. He knew damn well I was gay. Okay. <laughs> like everyone in everyone in my youth group knew I was gay. There's there no you couldn't deny it. I was gay as fuck, right? But like they never like judged me for that. Like he mm. never treated me differently. Like he like they're white. Yeah. So we always joked around saying that's like my 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 white father. You know what's funny? I feel like any black person that grew up like 
in a mixed culture has their one white family yeah there's like that's i have my, a white the, family they're like yeah the, my the, the pewits those are my white that's my white family right <laughs> Mine there are the Maoris. yeah yeah the pewits <laughs> it was crazy though too it was just a fact that i went to an all-white church too so maybe i play different also i went to an all-white church mm. you know some churches i've seen other like black churches you no know, you got like the live band you got like the drums you got the, you got the clapping no one in my church was clapping on beat <laughs> you know <laughs> Not what one person clapped on the beat at my church we didn't they didn't even clap to music so <laughs> Wait, I, I, I will say winning. that they, was something that was lacking <laughs> they, um, oh, my, my my friend you know siani she was trying to get them to clap in church <laughs> and it was not happening we're just in church you know seeing on the old rugged cross you know those, all those little those hymns <laughs> We were, we were singing that kind of stuff. So everyone's like a real, tr- we were like probably the youngest people there. Most of my church is full of all white um, we people. We had a, we had a mixed, bu- the, at least the branch that I was in, we had a mixed bunch of ages. No. And what's interesting is I never knew my best friend growing up, like my, when I was five or six. Yeah. The lady that lived next door to me, she was my best friend. She was like in her eighties. She was old, but <laughs> I didn't even realize until after I got baptized that she went to that church and I went to the church, the same building with her, found right. out years later when I got baptized. And so it was like full circle. You know what? I <laughs> but it got was a like... full house in your church. <laughs> but no, so I, why bring up why I bring up the whole just just kind of give the kind of reference like the culture shock there or like not culture shock but the difference you know it's probably me there's probably like me my brothers a couple of our friends who also went to ys because most of us went to ys were black and a couple of people like older women were black so it's very little black people so it's just a bunch of all white women there's pretty much are men you know they always i don't i don't know if they knew but they, they they never treated me differently. It was just mm-hmm. it was just other things, just like reading the Bible, right? And the version I have is the New International Version, NIV. And in there is like First Corinthians. I want to say it's First Corinthians, some like chap like chapter six or eight, something like that, where it has like a whole list of sins, and it's and it said homosexuality in there, and that like fucked with me. Like, Heavy. for me, it wasn't supposed to be a closet because I was scared of other people. I just didn't want to be gay. Yeah. That's all it came down to because, like, I'm, I'm ashamed of God or... That was always I'm, my I'm going too. to hell. Like, yeah. it was... It, was, it, it was, was, was never that I was afraid of other people. It was more so what happens when I die. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, am I going to hell because I'm gay? Yeah. And it was, it's, just, it's just those kind of things. You just look at it. And then my church, once again, like, it wasn't like them themselves didn't say anything bad really like that. But I remember specifically i remember we had this book so in our in our youth pastor like our group he he got his books for teens you know it had the usual you know try stay away from sex or mm-hmm. stay away from my like, drugs and alcohol but there's a chapter in there and i wish i had this fucking book because the trauma the self-hate in that fucking notebook and we had to write your the reflection section it was dark it was mm. dark as shit because it was one section was on it was homosexuality it was a whole section in that book mm. and i wrote i hate myself so much because i'm gay i wish i was never gay mm. i just i it, this the self-hatred it was so real i think i mean it's like in the uh previous episode where i had like my first girlfriend because this is around the same time my first girlfriend I remember I went to her her house and then her mom she was like I can tell you hate being gay and I was like I broke down I was like I do I hate being gay mm-hmm. and this is around the time I was like 15 years old so a lot of people around me they knew I was gay so like me actually coming out to my friends and all that it wasn't it wasn't an <laughs> issue it was more so like I dated I started dating my first girlfriend was my friend's ex mm-hmm. and so like yo broco broco oh my god <laughs> like joking around like that but pretty much I never got like a bad reaction fortunately about being gay it was more so like on my side like self-hate because of like the church because when I not, I want to say real quick not not because of church itself the people that church I went to um they were good people it wasn't that it was just like reading the bible like the reading the mm-hmm. NIV version because the NIV version is not the original version, so it, it was that, and it was even just the fact that we have that. That I do wish there was anything I wish I never did, or was that notebook because that notebook there was so much self hate I went yeah. through because it's like homosexuality is bad or all that, or might even, and it was just crazy because I do remember <laughs> being in church. I do remember we had like our youth group, 
And every week we, we, we talked about the notebook every week. And I remember when homos actually came out, I felt the fucking tension. Everyone, I felt them staring at me, yeah. which was crazy because one of my friends, yeah, she's gay, you know, <laughs> but she she didn't come out yet. But I felt her looking at me. Everybody, friends, Jordan, Austin, all of them are looking at me. Low key, the pastors, the youth pastor, Mr. Phil looking at me, his wife, because mm-hmm. everybody knew I was gay. I'm just in there like. Ooh, this is this is a tough one, guys. This is a tough one here today. <laughs> Don't say I didn't say shit that whole sir. I didn't say nothing, not a mm-hmm. goddamn thing. I didn't say anything. My I'm looking down. I'm looking at nobody. I just feel eyes, all eyes on me. Yeah. So I had those kind of moments. I mean, maybe another once or twice moment in um, church, but it wasn't the church itself. It was more so like my interpretation or just that that actual book. Because mm. in our church, we had. Uh... We had the King, King James version of the Bible, and then we also had like the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, all the other books and everything. Right. And we also had a youth group too, and we had like it's called Young Women's, and you pretty much go through like these steps in this book to gain these like virtues and like attributes that are morally. So that sounds that sounds correct. toxic. Young women, I bet you like you probably save yourselves for marriage, the man's the head of the household. You'd be surprised it's not. It was more so like um how to be a virtuous woman, meaning like having like your morals and sticking to your morals or like no sex before marriage. And the and interestingly enough it wasn't just young women's. Young men's had the same okay, outline. Okay, as long as we kept that even. But it, they had a little more, like, they had, like, more uh, on the sense of, like, more boyish type things. It, okay, it was just written okay. for boys. But it was, like, the same values were expected of men and women. <laughs> young men and young men, women. But I do remember, I don't remember them talking much about homosexuality. Like, they always read it. When we got to that portion of reading the Bible, because every year they would do like a, um, the church pretty much does incentives for you to read the Bible front to co- cover to cover. Yeah. Um, as well as the Book of Mormon and all the other texts that we use. But I remember it didn't really become a thing until one of my friends came out as gay. Oh, I was still closeted. I was not going to be the one. <laughs> it wasn't um, me. I ain't saying I was shit. not going to be the one. Head down. And I felt so bad because it, it was like it was like a chain effect. As soon as she came out, all of a sudden, every week, we had lessons about same-sex marriage or what marriage should be, man and a woman, and things like that. And I would hate that shit. It was weird because at that point, I knew... And my best friends knew. My closest right. friends knew. Because I told them, I was like, this is what I've been dealing with. This is how I feel. And at the time, my feelings were, this is who I am. But I don't have to act on it. Because then that doesn't make it a sin. Oh, yeah. The, you know, I was like, in, my, in, in, in my understanding of what I was reading, that's what it meant. See, like I was told different. I was, I was taught that you can sin in your mind. No, we were taught that too. But there with... The way that we were being taught, it was that the temptation is going to be there. So your mind is going to tempt you to do this. Satan's going to tempt you to do whatever. But it becomes a sin when you seek it out, when you actively go forth and do it, when you actively seek it out. So it's like, I might have a gay thought like, oh, she's hot. But then if I immediately say... But that's not okay in my mind. That in the in, in my understanding at that time, <laughs> just, that like erases can you it. You <laughs> imagine I'm like, damn, I want to eat her pussy so bad. Never mind. God said no. <laughs> I'm tired. I didn't say. But it was like I never, <laughs> I never really had those thoughts though. It was more so like, dang, I I feel very attracted to you, and I had to figure out what am I because I feel like a lot of young people have thoughts like hella vulgar, and like I didn't really have those kinds of thoughts. I wasn't really impressed about having sex or having like oh, all these ultimate my, gay experiences my god were we different because that was a big issue for me i swear i was just like i like and I it was wasn't very, even just girls like boys too i was no, not particularly I was, interested in having sex in general at that time i was a uh, i can't relate i already had sex around this time my, but my hormones were off the wall you know what but I will attribute a lot of it to the fact of 
I was so against my mom knowing anything about anyone I liked. So I feel like I kind of like played myself <laughs> into you like did. never even crossing that thought. I mean, I don't want to say playing yourself, but wow, my, my mind was different because I, I knew especially it was hard. Like I said, it started like in 2009 when I was like 13. When I went to church like 13 and around that time it was like eighth grade came up mm-hmm. and then i i remember shit yeah because this, this is that summer seventh grade going to eighth grade and i remember starting in eighth grade i really started having those thoughts it started in seventh grade but damn did it amp up my hormones i was a very hormonal child my thoughts didn't really start until after i got my first period so i would say like going into ninth grade oh see, so, you know i got my period when i was 12 yeah so i didn't get mine probably, until i was 14 that, that's that's probably why and that's too, probably why because i spent a lot of my younger childhood because of other things that happened to me i was very resentful to like physical yeah. relationships in general and then once i got baptized i was like hmm i don't really feel like i'm only into guys or only into girls and so i was just like eh, maybe i'm just like going through no. emotions in my mind i was like i'm just going through like a phase everyone goes through this then i hit 14 got my first period and i was like what is this <laughs> <laughs> i no. felt like those attra- strong attractions to people that were that i was encountering and i didn't have my first official boyfriend because i had a boyfriend in middle school but yeah it was i yeah but <laughs> My first official boyfriend, I didn't have one until I was 15, going on 16. You're, God, you were such a late bloomer. But that was also a thing my church taught. You shouldn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend until you're at least 16. And you yeah, shouldn't no. date seriously until you're at least 18. We know. We never had We never had those. Really, I, don't, I don't ever recall relationship talks, pretty much. I just remember that book, but I was already in high school. I don't. Because, I, and it wasn't like it's written anywhere, but it was just kind of one of the things that the prophet of the church recommended. It's like how your parents might give you house rules that aren't necessarily like law, but it just helps function your your life I didn't it's have easier house for rules. you to do this yeah i <laughs> didn't have house miss ma'am who never got a whooping in her life I must be nice how does it feel to live my dream <laughs> <laughs> it was great it was a it was a great time but no so for for me it was like how do i explain it no because like of course things happen younger don't need to talk about that on this on this episode but mm-hmm. things happen that's, that's I'm, same yeah that's like a whole different other episode but i went the opposite i went the opposite route because that happens quite a bit where something happens to you where you're young these are acting on it more and more mm-hmm. and more which why lots of you know girls can like prostitutes for example because of what happened to them in the past i wasn't a prostitute but <laughs> <laughs> i i experimented with I like mean, sex much, very yeah. very on and everyone experiences sex with early on there were guys Mm. so it wasn't even like girls but like i'll have sex with guys whatever like in my dreams though like hardcore like visioning like my classmates who are like like damn i'm like i want i want to i want to have sex with her you know like mm. i want to i want to kiss her i want to touch on her I'm, I'm having these kind of thoughts kind of like a like a horny boy or something like that and i was i was that's that was me and then so then with church it just it just wasn't helping because i'm just like i'm having these thoughts i shouldn't have these thoughts because we we're taught you can, you can sin in your mind just because you don't do it doesn't mean you're not sinning because mm-hmm. you could also sin in your you can mentally sin too so i was just yeah. like what the fuck i'm not doing it physically but mentally i'm doing it so i'm still sinning these thoughts won't go away mm-hmm. i'm trying to pray the gay away i want to pray the gay away but the gay is still here <laughs> the i'm gay's still like, gay knock knock bitch <laughs> right just on the closet like you coming out yet bitch you coming yeah. out yet? It, it was just so fucking hard and I, I do remember after, like, a couple years later, like, as I got older, I remember it was around, like, 2016, just the fucking hypocrisy, 2015, 2016, I remember specifically, just the fucking hypocrisy where I started going away from the church. And my problem with, like, religion, it's not even religious, I still consider myself a Christian. My problem's not with religion, it's with religious fucking people. It is yeah. my fucking issue. It's and which with really the people who go people to the extremities community. and they don't have... The know-how or the sense no, of for, to it's, back for it me, up. it's the fucking hypocrisy. Perfect fucking that example. Too, yeah. I remember I, I, was, I was at my friend's house, and I remember, I remember my my first instance really dealing with it. I remember 2015. Um, I was like 19 years old, 
and I already came out, already had a few girlfriends or whatever, messed around. So I'm, I'm feeling, I'm opening out, no problem. And I was at my friend's house, and she's on the phone with her, like her friend. That's a guy, whatever. For some reason, I get on the phone. I don't know why, but I'm on the phone. <laughs> and this guy, he's like, oh, well, you know, you have a nice voice or whatever. He's like, we should fuck. And I was like, what the fuck? We're gonna fuck. I don't even know you want. I was like, what the shit? But I was just like, no, sir, I'm gay. And he told me, he was like, well, you're going to hell. And I was like, why the fuck am I going to hell? He's like, you're going to hell because you're gay. And I was like, nigga, you just asked me to have sex with you, premarital sex with you, but I'm going to hell. He's like, yeah, because homosexuality, is a, that's, that's a sin. I was like, by your logic, you're going to be there with me. So do you want the, <laughs> do you want the aisle seat? Do you want the middle seat? Do you want the window seat on this plane going down to hell? Because you're coming, you're coming with me, buddy. Right. And, and that's it's just off of your dumbass logic here. That's what's happening. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's different. No, no nigga, it's, it's not the different. Same. It's not. I, and I, I, that's why I can't fucking stand that. Then fast forward to one of my last few times at this church. Because say my church growing up there, it was very nice. I love the people in there. However... One of the reasons I stopped going was because I remember in 2016, um, my youth pastor, the week before, you know, Obama approved gay marriage, I remember being in church and I'm in church and he was like, if this bill gets passed for gay marriage, you're going to catch me in jail because I'm going to riot. My youth pastor said that my Mm. youth pastor told me he's going to riot, catch him in jail because if they pass that bill. And I'm like, the fucking hypocrisy you know here. When Obama passed gay marriage, I don't remember there being any real, like, big talks in my church other than what was already happening because right. of the one who came out. Yeah. Where it was more so like they just kind of put out a few more notices about what the church believes uh, marriage is. I remember that there was a big deal because um, with the LDS church, you have to to meet certain requirements in order to be married in the temple, sealed in the temple, or to go perform temple recommendations or whatever you're going to do at the temple. And so I remember that there was a big discussion or issue because people were upset that the LDS church wasn't changing their stance on marriage or changing their stance on who could go and be sealed in the temple and do these things. And, you know, the way I view it is the church has their expectations. Yeah. They still openly welcomed LDS gay members into right. the church doors. And I don't feel like me, at least me personally, with the branch that I was with, I never had a incident where I felt like I was unwelcome. And it was more so just like I felt a little uncomfortable because I felt like, a lot of people were talking about things that they didn't really have a good understanding of. Yeah. Um, and then I felt like on the flip side, some of the gay people coming to the church were also being a little unreasonable. In like, the were sense they of, trying to get like married in the temple? Right. Yeah. Okay. Like they wanted to be married in the temple. And I was like, I mean, I understand why, because this is your religion. This is what you've grown up with. This is what you know. But at the same time, I personally, I fucks with, and like hypocrite, like fucks with, but I fucks with a a religion that's very strong, very standstill on their expectations. Right. I mean, I can, I can at least respect the fact of, you know, this is what our beliefs are and we're not going to waver from this. They did come out with a lot of other things talking about gay relationships and things like that and it was a little more inclusive than what i remembered it to be when i was actively going to church yeah afterwards but to this day to my understanding they still don't allow marriage gay marriage in the temple Uh, which makes sense based upon the yeah to me i i feel like i agree with that like one thing is is that i'm not i'm never i'm not the person who gets mad for example even my friends right say my friends what, that's what I, I always love what my youth pastor, he always said, my white father. <laughs> I always love what he said, where he always says, you know what, I love, um, I love the sinner, but hate the sin. Mm. Pretty much. Pretty much saying he loves everybody here, but he just, he hates the sin. It's, he hates sin itself. No matter what sin it could be, you could be like a drunk and he would hate it. You know, for mm-hmm. him, 
you know, a lot of people, he doesn't drink, for example. He's one of those, he does not drink alcohol at all. Yeah. For example, he's over here, like, in my face, getting drunk, you know, gays being the center, not like that at all. So yeah. for him, he always, I mean, her, he was just like, you know what, he'll never be okay with gay marriage, like all that. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's not what I believe in. But he would never, he's never treated me any kind of difference yeah. at all. And that's what I respect. I can respect someone who believes something different, but doesn't, because I feel like this whole gay agenda being pushed, I think the biggest argument, people feel like they're being forced to do something such as. Yeah. And I, I can kind of see it, depending on the situation, I can kind of see it, especially like the church. Like, I know a lot of people were mad or upset, like churches were upset because now they feel like they had, they're being forced to um wed so like a wed wed a gay couple yeah my stance on that is honestly if the couple i me personally if i knew a pastor didn't feel like for example my old pastor i knew for damn well he didn't feel comfortable mm. i would never want to come to him in the fucking first place yeah and try to get married i, I wouldn't like want to do there's that there's this whole superiority complex that's going on between you know any church and then just any gay individual yeah i feel like there's always going to be that because i feel like at no point are we going to successfully always meet in the middle no no there's there's, especially there's still gonna be like there's still gonna be two sides there's just no matter two what. separate values there and there's, that's okay there's nothing wrong i feel, like, with there's it. I feel like the problem with it is when um when you're deliberately forcing something quote quote unquote or when you're deliberately saying, I won't do this because of you being gay. Or saying, you know, like, well, you have to do this because it's the law. I feel like you still have the right to your beliefs as your religion. But I also feel like you have to respect the rights of the other individual. Yeah. So how, how And vice versa. I don't know. For for me, how I feel about it, I know there's that big ass incident with the whole cake thing a couple years ago with Colorado. Yeah. My my take on it is that I'm gonna go to a different bakery. That's just my take on it. A lot of That's like, me too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are like, well, they should do it because it's a business. But a lot of people are like, well, it's their right to their private. You know, they can do it for religion. Just because they said they they just how they said they want to do a swastika cake, they want to do a gay cake. And I'm yeah. like, I can kind of see that, you know. But me personally, I'm just like, I wouldn't fucking go to them. Me, real shit. Like for us getting like married. If a pastor said they want to marry us, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't feel offended. I'm like, okay, that's true. And I would just not go to them. If you're here and be like, I'm not going to marry you because like you start coming like the F word and all that, all that kind of stuff. That's that's a different story. That's a whole problem. That's a whole stake. If if you just respectfully said, you know, I just don't, I don't feel comfortable marrying you guys, I won't do that. Because of my beliefs. That's totally Fine. fine. You know, but so, it's like it's when you start being disrespectful and being insensitive. Like another, yeah. another example, growing up, why I also had to deal with lots of shit. Everything started. A lot of things happened. Like I said, like 2015, 2016, Also in twenty twelve, what happened was um, my friend committed suicide mm. in twenty twelve. He committed suicide because he was getting bullied for being gay, mm. and it sucked because like he just transferred schools and now he's getting bullied. And then he did that. He offed himself. And I I remember lots of us were sad, you know, like he was really he's a really cool dude to hang out with, pretty fun. And I remember there was someone like one of my friends at the time, I remember her saying, Well, he's going to hell anyways. Like, oh now he's really going to hell. I'm like, Are you fucking shitting me? And wow. she was like, Yeah, he's going to hell because He's gay and he committed suicide. Those are sins and he's going to hell for that. Even though that's what you believe. Just a fucking... And we just it's found like, out he died. Yeah. We just found this out. How fucking insensitive can you be? Like, I was really pissed at the time at that person because it was some hurtful ass shit. And I heard so much shit. Like, I will say, I started hearing shit like that with church. Because I'm saying, for me, it was always uncomfortable because of a because of a of a church situation. Yeah, was what made me being gay being uncomfortable. Yeah, because to the point where I don't I don't think to me it's just wilds. I don't think that a lot of people in church don't understand how much they can really affect someone. Yeah, and that shit fucking a lot bothered me. But there was times I walked out of church. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I I should be burning right now. Be just because of the fact that I'm gay, and like. It just irked me that some of these people, some of the stuff they'll say to me, that they're 
some of the biggest fucking hypocrites I knew mm. growing up where they were out there partying every week, getting drunk, over here doing drugs, having sex, having pre um having kids, I know, out of wedlock, getting divorced, get married for like a couple months or like a year, two years, and also they're getting divorced now because they cheated and all this mm-hmm. other stuff is happening. And to me it's just like, bro, how is it that y'all are in church feeling comfortable and feeling okay? Nothing's wrong. Meanwhile, because I'm gay, I'm being shunned. Or it feels like I'm being shunned. Because I went to other churches also as well, and it felt weird being in church, Mm. uh, other churches, because I was like, bro, I know damn well some of y'all up in here is gay. I know it, and then (laughs) I've heard people tell me that their issues with it were their churches sometimes. Like, for some reason, being gay is the one, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just it's just really saddening because I'm like, you don't, I don't think people even understand. Like, just that pray the gay away shit, like, it's fucking insane. Are you praying your alcohol? Are you praying? Is that working for you? I remember mm-hmm. once that, like, towards my last few, my last year of going to that church was, um, I came across an article about a man who was gay, but he had married a woman. And yeah, that happens quite a bit. And the way that they portrayed it was as if that was better than just being gay and being gay. That's and stupid. it was very that's, that's it was very interesting because I was going through a very difficult time for personally, and I was still in that mindset of like if I don't act on it, it's not a problem. Yeah, because I'm I'm not acting on it. I'm okay, and it was like. This article, this man, he pretty much had a beard. She was his beard. And she knew he was gay. He knew he was gay. He didn't tell her until after they had had kids. They had a whole family life and everything. He told her and they stuck it out. And somehow, miraculously, they worked it out. And I Cat. I remember reading that and I was just like, I don't want that. That's a bunch of bullshit. And there's quite a bit, you know, like what's it like they always say, you know, going to like Atlanta, you always have those kind of men in Atlanta mm-hmm. who there, there's so many. Well they'll sit there and then they'll be in like regular heterosexual relationships thinking because of, you know what? I don't I don't want to shame my family or my yeah. church. And women too. Women do it. Oh yeah too. women they'll, they'll, and yeah. But I definitely feel like gay men get it I, worse. Yeah, I, I for sure. I, I've heard more about gay men doing this and like lesbians for example yeah because i remember um when i first read the bible straight through and i didn't really feel anything about it i was like i i got to the part that talked about like that it's written homosexuality is a sin and things like that and i was just like okay but it wasn't until other people started relaying to me the message of what that chapter means right that i started to feel some way about myself I, I, and feel negatively about myself and i even remember i didn't come out until i didn't come out officially to the people that mattered to me until i was 20 oh damn see now yeah you're 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 a late bloomer because i came out to my mom funny enough on easter sunday so yeah and it wasn't even that i was a late bloomer it was that I was spending so much time trying to make it go away that it just never happened. And it was like I told my friends before I told the people that I really cared about knowing um, because I felt like I needed someone to be in the know with me because my friends were also LDS and everything. And so I was Mm. like, I need somebody here that knows and understand and it was interesting because like they have leadership roles at church of course and so for young women's i was in those leadership roles at the time and same thing i wasn't having sex i wasn't doing anything else illegal or anything like that and i wasn't like acting on my gay thoughts and so in my heart I, i felt some type of way about it but i was like i'm not doing anything Oh, um, I see. See, I know. Me was the opposite one. Me coming out to my friends didn't mean shit. I, re- I remember me, quote unquote, coming out to them. They're like, yeah, Devin, we fucking knew this. <laughs> They're like, we knew. We're just waiting for you to come out the closet. 
It wasn't even a closet. That closet was invisible. Like, only you saw that closet. We been knew you were gay. Like, thank you for finally coming out. Like, you know, that's how it was for me. But I feel like what what I don't like about what the church, what, what I think we talked about before a couple of days ago, is the fact that homosexuality is somehow people try to tie it into pedophilia. And it's a fucking annoying thing because that is dis- pe- that's disgusting. That has nothing to do with home. Do not sit there and try to throw that in there, okay? What what the what the fuck is wrong with people? And I can't because I remember hearing it because I re- I remember gay marriage and people were fucking saying, "Well, what's next? You could fuck a horse now." <laughs> it's like what? I remember people what's with bestiality, who... pedophilia. Why is this all connected? Home? That's, like, why are you guys connecting that? Why? <laughs> I remember there was a whole movement by like pedophiles to to be included in the homosexual world and i was like that is in no way shape or form the same thing yeah it's not even close and i feel like it comes from the fact that the original text was to say that pedophilia was a sin and they changed the homosexuality i feel like and i honestly feel like that's where a lot of the strong feelings come from about homosexuality is because the way that the text is written is the surrounding text is really referring to pedophilia, but they changed the one word to homophobia. And so you get those same strong reactions yeah, it's as like, if it was talking about pedophilia. I, uh, it's just weird. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still confused. Like how, how do, who, who, who thought that was a good change up? You know what I mean? Because that, that's really, dis- that's really disgusting. I remember I heard one take on it, uh, a thought I remember from like, like an old friend. I remember his take on why homosexuality, because I guess he said he heard from somewhere else, but like, well, maybe at the time it said that because of the fact that they're trying to populate the earth. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if that happened, I, that, that to me, that makes sense because the earth is not like billions of people as it was back then, that it's so different now. But for to me, it's like it's just weird how they they twitch like some Christians like twitch it like it doesn't make any kind of sense to me, especially with the fact that for example, Christmas coming up, Christmas is not even it's not even a Christian holiday. We just kind of just took it, or <laughs> you know, a lot of Christians celebrate Halloween. Yeah, they do the trunk of treats for the LDS church. At my at my and church, we it was a, they ca- they called it not Halloween, but it's Halloween. They're still right, still dressing up, playing games, getting candy, but it's not Halloween. It's yeah. like I don't I don't understand. It, it, it's it's Halloween. It's all of the hoop jumping for me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's the the hypocrisy for me. It's the hypocrisy, or just Santa, for example. Mm-hmm. I know, and a lot of people celebrate with Santa. I'm just like, why? First of all, why, why is Santa even a thing? The fact that deck jingle bells is a hymn. I was like, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and for me, I just feel like the Bible is just widely interpreted. However, you want to interpret, just I'm um, just the fact that it was used once again to justify slavery, or even even. Like the hands may tell, like yeah, it's it's a fictional movie. I'm like, I can I can see that should happen, especially as it's known that sperm male sperm is going lower. Somehow still can be the women's fault or something sperm that get a hands may tell. Yeah, sperm count's going lower. I I can see the, the hands may tell playing on real life shit, and they just use that one little passage. Mm. Like that's how people use the Bible. They literally say they see one little passage and run with it. I also feel like the issue is that not enough people care enough to go read it themselves. I'm say, yeah, not I'm like, have you read every chapter? I have. Have it, Have you read it? I mean, just reading Genesis over and over again or reading Daniel don't count. Yeah. You know? Uh, and, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I literally had, you know, I had to go back and forth with a family member yeah. about the Bible's text his version of the bible and my own version of the bible because i've read multiple versions of the bible front cover to the back cover and it's interesting how a lot of people who are very religious will fall upon the regurgitated text that they know because they've heard it everywhere every sermon is surrounded by these same three texts yeah and um They'll try and use that to combat us yeah, it's, or it's, to, to it's, be like it, their, their driving force. It, and then when you outsmart them with the same text that they have, they have nothing else to say. And I feel like 
me having that background knowledge of a lot of different religious texts, having read the Bible cover to cover, helped me not have to deal with a lot of, you know, Bible thumping people. Because it, it, as soon as they start pulling out their scriptures, I got scriptures to back myself up too. Yeah, see right now I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull it up because I know it's First Corinthians. Oh, it's First. See, I was correct. It was First Corinthians. Like said, I said six. So it was First <laughs> Corinthians six nine. And why I want to pull this up here is just for. Let me see. Did it have the NIV version? Because I said I I grew up on the NIV. Um, da 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 da. This is N. Okay. It says okay. It's it's crazy to me one. Going back up real quick, gonna pull up the KJ because it's like the Bible. There's there's so many different versions of it. Um, where this is, ah, I just lost it. Okay, one second. I think I think this is a KJV where it says, "Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind." So that's what it says there. But then if you scroll down a little bit more, then, oh, no, I'm sorry, that was, that was not the KJV. I don't know what I just read right now. This is the KJV. <laughs> Get um, it together. <laughs> it's not, it says the same thing. We're good. We're good. It says the same thing. But scrolling down, right? So you have that portion. And then you have, or do not know the, unright, the wrongdoers when I hear the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. I just read, two, I just read the same verse. I read a KJV and read an NIV, two different outtakes on it. Two different outtakes on it. Mm -hmm. NIV says it, adulterers nor men who have sex with men. But in KJV, it never mentioned that. It didn't say that. It said, nor, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, is what it said. And that's my, that's my issue. Oh, what was that? Oh my know. God. I don't know what that it. was right now. You got right too now. excited right there. <laughs> I really did. And what's, it's just crazy to me just hearing that where it's like how widely interpreted the Bible is. Where the KJV, you can read a KJV does not mention that in that verse. But then NIV does. In which we were taught, we were taught NIV. My Bibles in my room or NIV. Mm -hmm. So reading that, like, yeah, that definitely fucked with me. And a lot of people, it's just wild to me also too, the fact that how people interpret everything is up for interpretation except for <laughs> homosexuality talk to someone that oh yeah I'm a, I'm a god loving man all that but all of a sudden he's he's the one out there just getting drunk all night long tattoos out the ass yet there's a big debate on tattoos and drinking or getting drunk like the fine drunk i hear that all the time the fine you know they had wine they had wine it's like yeah define it they're like define drunk but almost like no that's that's a sin all that define tattoos i said well jesus had a tattoo it's like define it they want you to find every little thing or how it was widely interpreted for like slavery and all that mm -hmm. but homosexuality is like right then in there which is clearly what i just read right now for example in the new testament they didn't even say that yeah it's just a version you read would twist it up but everything else is, every other sin is wildly up for interpretation except for that one i just yeah. want to throw it out there i think, I and think then it's even very that one too because sometimes the bible that you're reading doesn't even mention it specifically so no. it's really up to whoever you're your getting pastor. your sermons from and more than likely they're lots, going to interpret them, it that yeah. way and then too i feel like you know of all of the religions that i've encountered me personally i feel like of the christian versions i really appreciated the lds the most just in the fact that um i think that they were very evenly scaled at least every time you say lds i'm always thinking lsd every time no. i always wish <laughs> latter them day up. saints get it right latter uh. day saints. but um <laughs> you know i don't go there actively i don't really um have anything to do with the church anymore but in my experience with church they were the most welcoming the most consistent and their texts seem to flow in a way that makes sense so like taking the King James Bible and then reading the Book of Mormon, reading the Doctrine and Covenants, reading, you know, all of these different texts, the Pearl of Great Price, all of it seemed to make more sense. And I really valued that they never said, well, here's what it is and here's how you should interpret it. They nine times out of 10 said, well, here's what we're reading today. 
let's have a discussion. What do you feel? No, that's, and that's here's not what I feel. That's not what and happens in Baptist. It was always, it was never like, of course you had your, you know, your congressional sermons. Like we come in on Sunday, somebody speaks at the podium yeah. and like they tell you their interpretation of whatever text they're reading. And it was always a situation of, well, this is how I interpreted this passage. Like even when they were, they had all of those like surplus of homo, well, marriage is what they were focusing on, but it was, it was geared towards the homosexuality movement in the U S and like Obama passing the bill or whatever. But even when we were having those discussions at church, it was always, we're going to read these sections of the Bible. Here are some corresponding texts. And we'll come in next Wednesday, next Sunday, and we'll talk about what we feel about it. Oh, I never no. talked. That, that was that was not <laughs> during us. those ones. Was, I just kind of stayed. I I feel like during those this, conversations, I would say is, very is little. During, is this during your youth group or just like in regular church? Both. See, no, that that was not the case. One, you're just like, Amen, Amen, yes, God, yes, Lord. Because yes, it's like Lord, our yes. youth group. We had days where we just did fun activities. But we also had days where we would, you know, read the text and then incorporate it in some kind well, of way. You, like we learned group, how to youth group. We were like that in youth group where we yeah. were like, OK, we, we might we or we, we might watch some stuff. I remember that movie Revelation scared the living shit out of me after watching that. And once again, because the fear, I was like, am I going to be stuck on Earth because I'm gay? <laughs> and then now I'm stuck. I'm not getting raptured mm-hmm. and now I'm going to hell. And that movie scared the shit out of me. I, I did not sleep well for a good month after reading it because I was like so fearing that I would not get raptured. Mm. And so then we we or we we might did other stuff and play like little games, had maybe a little bit of discussions of it or whatever. But pretty much in predominantly like actual like Sunday church, like in the actual like, with the actual like church pastor and all that. No, it wasn't. It was just like we we're just there listening. We sung we sung some few songs for a bit. We all hugged each other for a meeting greet. And then after that, we just kind of heard the pastor talk. And our corner, we, we were called the amen corner. Not for a good reason. We were called the amen corner because we never paid attention so much mm-hmm. <laughs> that our pastor, they called the amen corner. The every time he said something, he's like, well, say, can I get an amen? We were supposed to say amen, make sure we're paying attention. <laughs> that's why we were called the amen corner. So that's me. But out of that, pretty much, we weren't saying amen. We were just like listening or like taking notes. We were like, they gave us like, they gave us a little uh, sheet that said notes on it where they gave us like a little um pamphlet where had the scriptures the verses they were they're going to discuss and then there's another section for notes where when when the pastor's talking you're supposed to be taking notes well when we came in on sunday we had the congressional meeting which is everyone and they gave you your pamphlet of course but the pamphlet usually just had like um like a quote or a scripture of the day and then you had a li- the list of who was going to be talking, and they had a little activity on the back page. Who's for- going? How big was your church? Who's going to be talking? They had a little activity page on the back for like kids, or if you wanted to take notes. Mm. And you usually had like at least three speakers, one of which would be the bishop. And it wasn't like they did like hour long things. It was like it w- that meeting was an hour, and we included three hymns that are. In or between, like two to cross. five minutes long, depending on the song and time of the year. And then after you finish the congressional meeting, we would go into like age meetings. So like you had your um, relief society, which is the women. You had I forget what it's called for the men. I never really cared because <laughs> I I wasn't gonna be end up there. Um, and then they had you know for teens tweens and then for infants and children toddlers they had how long were you at church for and so then that next one was about 30 minutes and then you section off for just young women how long and young men how long were you at church for this sounds like Like two and a half hours two and a half hours to three hours depending on if i had anything to do after after church yeah yeah um but i i enjoyed it i will say because I liked how everything was broken down. I I, I, I very much like structure. I'm a whole for structure. I, I, I noticed this. <laughs> and so it was like, I liked that we had set times. We had structure for each thing. And then I also liked that even though they had very much like the similar ideals of any other Christian church you would go to, 
I especially gravitated to this church because it was they relied heavily on encouraging doubt. So you know, you're not what you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to believe everything because you know? the way that we were taught is you're given choice and accountability when you come to earth and in that comes doubt and so it's important that you have some sense of temptation some sense of doubt so that you know for sure in your heart with no question that you are faithful to christ and to our heavenly father all i want to say is because you brought up doubt i just want to say it's very i i I can't i can't stand because i mean we okay we did talk about that where you came to earth free will is what we said yeah you have Mm -hmm. free will I just always find it so interesting when people would sit there and they they do some dumb shit or for example they cheat on their spouse and all <laughs> the that. The devil made me do the it. The devil, yep, the devil <laughs> made me do it. Nah, you, you chose to it. do yeah. it. Like the, the devil got into my heart and takes Satan away from me. It's like, no, you chose to do that. You have free will. You know, you were not forced to do the so. The way that our church, at least my bishop and my branch, I don't know if this was relevant across all of LDS, but the way that they spoke about temptation, they never said, oh, it's Satan or, oh, it's the devil. They always referred to it for what it was. It was temptation. You were tempted to do something and you did it. And so I felt like what I enjoyed was that they stuck so closely to choice and accountability. Okay. It is your choice and you are the one so being held are, accountable. Are you, do, you, do you feel like being gay is a choice? I feel like being gay is not a choice but i feel like you have a choice on whether or not you're going to act on it okay i see is how i and that's how i always felt for myself in yeah exactly in the way that i approached you could you they think you could pray the gay away because it's a choice and i'm like that one is because it was never like oh it, it and the way that they talked about homosexuality it was never like a sense of you know you made this choice, you you have to deal with it. It was more so like, you have a choice. That's your temptation. No, you have a choice whether you're going to fall into temptation or whether you're going to live Christ-like. And so that for me was what made it easier for me to come to terms with who I am because I'm like, at least with, if it is that much of a sin and a sense where I'm going to go to hell, I also had strength in knowing that jesus knew my choice was going to be my choice regardless and so <laughs> see this where we we kind of feel it's very it's, it's like I'm, different than a lot of other christian yeah. churches because and it's not i'm not saying that they they counseled me and told me well you have either this choice or this choice you can either be straight or gay it was more so like here are the resources you need to search that for yourself and come to your own yeah, decision. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Even still to this day where I still have those thoughts, it's like, damn, you know, should I? Because I'm going, be, be, uh, is this what's happening because I'm gay? Am I going? Like, I still have those thoughts where my mind is like, I was like is my last wish. I, like, I would imagine it like, well, is it like, I'm going to kiss you. And they say, all right, Jesus, I'm coming home. You know, <laughs> like John 3, 16, John 14, 6 and all that. I, I still had those um those kind of thoughts, especially like, like, well, you know, being gay is a choice. I'm like, that's, to me, that's a really gray area. Mm. I personally feel like just because there's also like other animals, for example, there's other ants or species that are gay. Yeah. And they have like, there's like, or did they choose to that? Or they don't, they don't have like the consciousness right. of live. Did they choose, you know what I mean? Or even, I know there's other factors, like growing up very young, I knew I was gay, like very, very young. Mm. I, I already knew I was trying to the women like at five you know, and no, there was nothing in front of me. There was no like over here seeing TV, kids kissing. I none of that shit. I just knew, and mm-hmm. it was just it was just it could have been. I don't I don't know. It was like an environmental thing. I don't know, but like at a very young age, I was trying to like kiss my dad's friend's daughter. I remember mm-hmm. at five. So for me, it's like I was like, well, God, why did you make me this way? Mm-hmm. I've I've always I've always had those those kind yeah, of thoughts there's always the pull and push and pull of well god makes no mistakes it's but weird. then also right. you it's have like choice it. and accountability so that's why for me i was like i just kind of laid myself bare and i was like well what do i feel like god wants and then i said what are 
my goals yeah. as well. Cause and like on a lot of instances, I do still align with being Christian and being like in that religion and feeling those ways. But in a lot of other ways, I just don't align with it. And that's my choice. Yeah, is how for, I feel about for it. For me, I still believe. I still read my Bible and all that. Overall, yeah. though, for me, it's like I just don't go to church. And I probably like, well, you have to go to church and all that. Like, I don't think, for me personally, I don't find it necessary to go to church, especially just the toxicity in some churches I have seen. Mm. And it's just overall where it's like a lot of people, I feel like they just hear stuff and they just run with it. They don't actually read the Bible. Like they couldn't, tell, like, they couldn't tell me like every chapter in the Bible and all that. So overall, I just feel like personally, just more, I don't want to say more, just I'm just spiritual, but it's like, for me, I rather interpret it myself and all that than mm-hmm. go to it, than go to church, hear something that may not even be true because they do say, you know, watch out for false teachers or prophets, which someone recently, like in the Philippines, something like that, he just got in trouble for like sex trafficking. He had like six, he had six million followers mm-hmm. and that stuff happens. It's very common. So I just say be on the lookout. Okay. Now, let, let me ask you this. Would you want to go to church? Or would you want to find a church together or? I'm not opposed to it. I mean, yeah, I I never felt anything against going to church or like being religious. I just didn't see myself going to that church anymore. I see. Yeah, because for, for me, it's not that I wouldn't. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's, it's kind of that maybe just the churches here. I just wouldn't really want to. And I've it been wasn't, to quite a few churches here. It wasn't necessarily like the church it was more so i just me being me and not being able to mesh who i am with the culture of that church like the religion itself i could eat that all day and like be fine with it like i still have my bible i still have my book of mormon i still read those things that i have but i just never i didn't see myself being in that ch- in the church physically with that group anymore all right I can see that. Well, maybe just look up gay church. I know, I know, I know it's a thing now, like gay, gay churches or even. I'm like questionable about gay churches. I feel like there's some shady I'm, I'm stuff. Like, I'm like, are you just <laughs> pandering to gay people? Yeah. Why well, you just saying you're team Jesus, but you, you, but you're just trying to get more people in your church is failing or something. I don't know. Cause it, I mean, it's kind of like, like you said, kind of you, like an expectation or whatever. But for me, it's like, I understand an expectation, but I'm like, I'm going to need a consistency. Cause I mean, I remember, I mean, for example, there was a show called like, preacher's daughters or something like that this show was like they're like these ratchet girls who were his daughters like said like, pre- as a title you know or preacher's daughters and they remember they went out to like a different country or something and they were traveling it was just so wild to me that i remember these people were like they they, they entered a twerking contest they were like wow. smoking weed or they're like drinking yeah all that <laughs> but there's a girl there i think she was either like gay or like a lesbian or bisexual and some of the girls were giving her shit for that and I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? I'm like, are you psycho? Like, and that's what I mean. So for me, it's more so a lot of times the people, like in actual, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying every church goer is like that. You know, you go to church, praise God, you know, I'm not saying that at all. But there's there's been instances where I just hear stuff from other people who go to church or mm-hmm. just, just my somewhat slight experiences in church. So for me, it's just like, I have my Bible. For me, the way that what I've gathered from the Bible is that it's less about where you are, more about your connection with yeah your, you know, your, as- your whoever your God is. And so it's like, it's not about showing up every Sunday. You can show up every Sunday and just like fuck 10 dudes and like smoke the line of Coke right before you walk I love into the door. Smoke the line of Coke. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't do coke, okay? I don't do coke. <laughs> but, you know, just because you show up every Sunday does not mean that you're not a sinner. Oh, yeah, just because you show up. just because you don't show up every Sunday does not mean that you are just out here sinning and you never do anything religious. Yeah, just because you show up every Sunday does not mean you're holier than thou. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just really my, just my, my take on it. Especially because I, I just known people, for example, who were like you know, sell drugs or they've um, killed people and all this other stuff, mm. like in the in the trap life or whatever. And then they have the nerve to sit there and like judge me. 
I'm like, you killed someone over <laughs> Trump, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but you're judging me. I'm like, yeah. what is happening here? Because it's so also it's like, just, it's I, I'm a firm believer that my body is my temple. And so wherever I go, Jesus goes. Jesus go with you to hell? This is true. <laughs> I'm just, he has his I'm own not room saying you're heaven. going to hell I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just i'm just saying so but yeah you know i just feel like you can have church wherever you need to have church as yeah, long as you're I, all feeling the holy spirit i just spirit. feel like too many times there's just been lots of instances it's like you can disagree whether you choose to or not but you, you can disagree in a respectful manner and once that goes both ways you know because just because you believe in homosexuality the that, you know, because you're gay does not sit there and mean you have to push that onto people who believe, yeah. who don't believe in homosexuality should be uh, accepted or should be, gay marriage should be accepted. You shouldn't yell or scream. I feel like she's like, you know what, we can agree to disagree. It's how I feel like yeah. it's just like, if you don't believe it, but then all of a sudden now you're like getting people's faces, you know, or saying you're going to hell or you're, you're worthless, you're nothing, all because you're gay. I feel like both sides do it i'm not just trying to put blame on the other um but i do feel like just a lot more so i think it happens more in a lot churches more respect for each other is yeah i feel like you know as human beings because i'm like and it all goes back to the fact what everyone likes to say love this hate the sin love the sinner love yeah. the sinner hate the sin yeah that's but the same. it's like you have to actively do that. Yeah, you can't. And then you can't on the flip side, one. just like you as the gay person get to live your life how you choose. Yeah. The person who's super religious also gets to live their life how they choose. That's what comes with religious freedom. It's the same way as like you know, the whole argument between different types of religions. I feel the very same way. Everyone has oh, the right for to sure. believe what they want to believe, and be who they want to be as long as it's not being disrespectful towards yeah. another or it's not directly hurting another without yeah. their like you know their just, consent or whatever just, it might be just clear the air for some people who don't know this um it's 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 fucking mind-blowing i'm st- i still gotta keep saying this to people but muslim is not a race yeah it's not a race people I, I can't like we don't like the muslims you know the, the muslim people they're born in this place and all that i'm like muslim is not a race it's not it's not it really it is a religion yeah it really is and so <laughs> yeah for me i agree with that too i agree with if someone's an atheist someone's muslim someone's jewish someone's lutheran someone's just baptist catholic i feel like no matter what respects what else is this um religion or non-religion you know don't yeah. be an asshole with it respect and even if someone says that they're Christian and they clearly do something that's a sin or they're whatever and they clearly do something that's against that religion, you have to understand people make mistakes, people make their choices, people have their own accountability for what they do. Yeah. So no amount of times of you telling me that it's a sin to be gay or to date women because I'm a woman, is it going to erase the fact that I do? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you trying to, to pray my gay away or you trying to explain the Bible to me is not doing anything for me, sis. It really is not. I just want to end on my favorite Bible verse. I just love saying this to people <laughs> just, just to be the, it's just a penny in me. It's like Matthew 7, 1, judge not that ye be not judged. Let he without sin cast the first stone. Well, is pretty much what that is. <laughs> pretty much, isn't that what? There's, there's, something, there's, 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 there's a lot of ways to that say mean it. the same exact thing. I'm like, okay, like, okay, Peter, Paul, like all that. Y'all just, are just copying off each other. Hey, yo, let me get the notes. Pretty much, because I, I will say, there's lots of verses in the Bible that pretty much say the same exact thing. But they were also written at different times. So. Yes. But we're just leaving it at that. But we just wanted to say, but we just wanted to have our, our growing up gay conversation because it's once again, it's not, it's, this is it, this isn't an anti church, anti religion kind of thing. It's just our ex- it's just our experiences because I feel like me being growing up Christian and gay kind of shaped things. I, I do feel like I'm better off than lots of people who grew up this way. A lot of people did not have it. Um, I feel like if you are someone who's gay and a Christian, I feel like have that honest conversation with yourself. If you got to keep trying to tell yourself that you're going to pray the gay way, you're, you're gay. You're, you're going to be gay. I I, I I hate to break that to you. You're gay. <laughs> I just say own it. I honestly feel like do whatever works for you because not everyone 
is in a safe space I where they can be openly disagree. gay and Christian. I just, I mean, I mean, it's true. I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever thinking of America, works okay? for you. I'm thinking of America, you're in California or something like that. Because in some cases, like you said, like, I, I don't feel like it's right to sit there if you're, if you're gay. I don't necessarily think it's right. And you know you are, and you just accepted it. But you sit, for example, if you're a gay man and you're, you're married to a woman to try to hide it, that mm-hmm. I don't agree with. So and yeah. that and, and those kind of cases I, I definitely don't. believe in being upfront. Yes, I mean if 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 you're a gay man and she's a lesbian and y'all both trying to hide it, a the teacher's own y'all work that out. You know what I mean? <laughs> y'all had that conversation. I know I know someone who did that. So that's that's to me that's fine. But like if you're not I mean telling your partner and all this other stuff and then you're out there sleeping with men, knowing you're gay, you know I feel like that that stuff. It, that that's for me what makes sense. Because I'm like, I don't feel like just because you feel gay that you have to tell everyone that you're gay. Oh, no. But I definitely feel like if you are having sex with other individuals while you're seeing someone in a straight passing relationship, you should be forward. Is that a term? Straight passing? Straight passing. The fuck is that? (laughs) Just kidding. In a straight relationship. We're going to do a whole episode. I heard that before. What the fuck's a straight passing? What the fuck? You'd be be surprised. We're we're, going to do an episode trying to figure out how gay are we. I'm telling you, come soon. I'm going to fucking fail that. (laughs) I really am. Because what the fuck's a straight passing? I'm thinking the passing of Jesus Christ, you know, or or whatever happened. And he came out the, 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 the tunnel, the tomb in three days. That's where, um, my, that's where my tired. mind went with this. I was like, what? We're going to pray for you. Yeah, pray my gay away or something. Pray her gay away, y'all. <laughs> but it's been your girl, D. And it's been your girl, M. And we'll catch you the next one. Peace.